Om Shanti. Are you all happy? In this video, we are going to see why it is stressed in many religions not to cry when somebody dies in their family. So it's been a rule in Christianity and Islam. And it's also followed by Brahmin families. So not only they don't cry, they even keep the body out of the house within a second after death of that particular person. So, why is it so? Why do they do this? Why, why all religions emphasize on the fact that we should not cry? Is it possible? It may be true that they don't cry, but is it really true that they don't cry at heart? They don't feel the pain of someone's death especially if it is the death of their beloved ones i don't think so right they still cry in their heart so they try to divert their minds by reading verses from bible gita quran so and so but still it hurts them for a month or even longer when someone they are close to depart but there is one particular thing one particular secret that this particular comment reveals that is one should not cry over anybody's death why is that so that is what we are going to see now um, it's been a custom among Hindus that when they take the dead body to the burial ground they will dance with joy but that's not the family member of the dead ones but still they will employ someone for money to dance with joy do you know when this practice actually started and why because it looks very illogic right it doesn't look logical at all to dance over someone's death because it doesn't look like an happy incident so why do they do like that and moreover after the death of someone in the family um they even cook non-vegetarian foods to show that they are happy so when did this custom start it started 5000 years back but they didn't cook uh, non-vegetarian foods because they didn't eat non-vegetarian foods back then it's been a custom very recently only after the invasion of um, other religious other religions into india that we start eating non-vegetarian foods before that it's been strictly vegetarian foods so 5000 years back when someone 
dies. They celebrated it with great joy. Right from the bottom of their heart. They didn't employ someone to dance. They themselves danced. The family members itself danced. Their loved ones itself would dance. They were really happy. They didn't act as if they were happy. They really felt happy that he left the body. How is that possible back then? Why is that not possible now? The main reason is nobody left the body before completing their life their full life period that is their minimum lifespan itself is 150 years only after the completion of 150 years one will die it is for sure so only after living their full life one will die that may be the reason they are not sad but why are they happy what is happy about leaving the body actually uh, it is true that they completed their full lifespan of 150 years but even if it did not happen so even if they were to leave the body in the middle it didn't happen like that but still if we consider like that if they leave the body uh, when they are just 20 years would they cry the answer is no they wouldn't cry even then they will still be happy why and coming to the present time why do people cry when their family members die they may cry out of love that is one of the reasons there's also another reason that is they are left without any support the backbone of the family has left the body which is why they cry out of helplessness this situation did not exist back then 5000 years back that's not the situation nobody is dependent on anybody everybody is filled with everything in terms of wealth in terms of health in terms of confidence everything everybody is filled with everything they are totally independent the whole Bharat was heaven and only Bharat that is India existed back then And they were so happy and actually nothing of that sort actually happened that is nobody left the body without completing their full lifespan nothing unexpected will happen at all they all know for sure everything that happens will be just for their good no accidents will happen no diseases will ever come to anybody nobody will hurt they will all be like the happiest children in the world they will all be very happy even children will be happy even the adults will be happy everybody would be happy then because india was heaven 5000 years back 
it continued to be heaven for 2500 years for the first 2500 years india was heaven this is the heaven that was mentioned in bible this is the heaven that was mentioned in quran this is the vaikunt that's been mentioned in all hindu vedas that's nothing but india a part of india was heaven that's the only thing that existed there was no other country no so many religions so many languages nothing there was just one way one kingdom one language it was so 5000 years back it continued to be so for the next 2500 years only after the completion of 2500 years the same world gradually turns to hell so we are now living in the hell the good news is the hell is going to end within the next 20 years what will happen after that simple what will happen after december well it's going to be january yes after the completion of hell it's going to be heaven again just like day and night after the completion of each day it will be followed by night similarly after the completion of hell it will be heaven again after the completion of heaven it's going to be hell again so this is the 5000 year time cycle and there's a significance of this cycle you want to know that whatever happens in one 5000 years that is one kalpa one kalpa consists of 5000 years whatever happens in one kalpa it keeps happening over and over again without any single change or modification to understand it very easily if you are watching this video right now there is no doubt you have watched this same video 5000 years back at this very moment and this is exactly what you are going to do after 5000 years on the same moment this is what you are going to do time after time at this particular moment of any kalpa so why did they celebrate 5000 years back when someone leaves their body that's because um, okay before going to that consider this for example if a dead body of a beautiful girl passes in front of your home and you are watching it of course that girl was familiar to you you used to see her quite frequently that's it so how would you feel on seeing the dead body of that girl you will have sympathy for her that's it nothing much you will say why did she say why did she die at such a young age that's it you may think about her for a while that's it but what if that girl was the one whom you loved for the past two years how would you feel on seeing the dead body of your lover you will feel as if your heart is about to break right you will feel such intense pain what's the difference the same girl why pain all of a sudden because 
because you had this feeling you had nurtured this feeling for the past two years that she is yours she belongs to you which is why it hurts so much which is why you suffer so much pain this is the very same reason why it hurts to lose your family member the more thought that you have that they belong to you the more is the pain that you are going to endure so you cry even if your religion forbids you from crying still you will cry in your heart you will cry when you take bath you will cry when you eat you will cry when you sleep it you may not cry in front of others because your religion forbids it but still you will cry nothing can stop you from crying inside you will cry in your heart so that's something your religion can never stop you from why because they didn't say the way not to cry in your heart that is why so that is something missing the secret of why you should not cry is not given they just have given you should not cry that's it an incident happened in a railway junction a girl was crying like anything because um, she said that a girl passenger who was traveling with her was speaking with her so lovingly and she went to the bathroom in that very moment that neighbor girl passenger took her baby and escaped she couldn't find her that is why she was crying she lost her baby she lost her newborn baby which is why she is crying like anything and everybody around her was advising her to go to police uh, they were giving some suggestions but one thing strange happened it shocks everybody one man shouted hey lady keep quiet don't try won't you stop crying or i will slap you she was shocked well we are shocked as well you are shocked too right we were shocked she didn't cry does it mean she has stopped crying in her heart that is what religions are doing they ask you not to cry but they didn't give the why they didn't give the reason they didn't say why you should not cry and how to prevent yourself from crying in such tragedy and we are going to exactly deal that one we are going to reveal the secret on how not to cry even in your heart even in that kind of situation life or death situation while this Bharat was heaven not only they didn't cry when someone left their body but also they celebrated that you know why because the reason that they didn't cry is not only because they have completed the full lifespan but also because they didn't have any kind of the feeling of mind over anybody they didn't have nobody in heaven had that feeling 
of course they will be loving to each other but they didn't have the feeling that he belongs to me this palace belongs to me this animal belongs to me they didn't have that feeling they were truly independent that is what called the true independence is they were truly independent they were not only independent of their family members they were not only independent of the atmosphere but they are also independent of their own body that is they didn't even think for even a second that this body is mine they know that it is their body but they did have that attachment you can understand right for example we know that this is our country but we are not going to cry because someone in my country has died we wouldn't right we know this is ours we know he is my countryman but still i don't cry because i don't have that attachment i don't have the feeling of mine that mine that attachment i didn't have over everybody but in heaven they don't have that feeling over anybody not even with their own body so they were happy if they don't even consider this body to be theirs then who are they that's the problem that's why we cry now because we consider ourselves to be this body but they didn't consider that body to be them they know it is theirs but that is not them then who are they they are the imperishable souls they had this knowledge i'm um, the imperishable soul that shines like the tiniest star in between the eyebrows that's where our soul exists actually that itself is me this is my body this is not me this is this body is just like a dress to the soul they were totally aware of this they know that they are the imperishable and independent soul they see each other only as soul they love the soul and not the body so why should they cry because the soul is everlasting it will never die so that's the main gita sar right that's the main that's the essence of gita soul will never die it cannot be destroyed by fire water air anything it's everlasting it's eternal not only they know that because even we know that but we don't remember that every second which is why we accumulate wealth right uh we had this attachment because everything that we possess that is something one we can enjoy as long as we are in this body the moment we lose this body and take another body we cannot enjoy the property that we had accumulated while we were in this body right so we don't seem to remember this while we live that is why we have been giving pain to others by our words thoughts and actions but there back then 5000 years back they have this constant feeling that i'm not this perishable body but i'm this imperishable soul and they will talk 
only to souls they will watch only here in between the eyebrows of the ones they are speaking with what happened as a result they didn't have attachment they know they are speaking to the independent soul that's not going to be there in that body forever of course they are aware that he is my son he is my husband he is my father they know that but they also know that they are going to be my father only as long as they are in this body that's it but they have this love only for the soul and not for this body so they will do their duty they will complete their duty as a father they will complete their duty as a husband so they will complete their duty without attachment as long as they are going to be in the body i'll serve my duty if they leave this body i'm not going to be worried because i know that soul is going to take an, a, a new body so what is there to cry that is what god says i don't cry over anybody's death but i love everybody more than anybody can anybody love anybody more than god god is love love is god so they they compare love with god he's the symbol of love he loves everybody tremendously without any expectation but still when somebody dies he doesn't cry and he says why should i cry what is there to cry you were in this body as long as you need to do or as long as you need to play the role that is fixed to play while you were in this body and after completing that role you have taken another body to play a completely new role so what is there to cry so i don't cry i don't i don't get hurt by that similarly you should not get hurt either because what's there to cry you are totally safe you have entered a mother's womb you have taken a new body what is there to cry everything you suffer is because of your past karma everything you are going to suffer is because of your present karma so that is all you need to worry no need to worry about death and in heaven nobody performs any bad karma so they don't suffer while they are alive you know why they didn't do any bad karma because they didn't consider themselves as this perishable body they didn't have this body consciousness which is why they are not slaves of lust anger attachment ego and jealousy these five evils or vices are the root causes of all human sufferings and they were free of these vices because of which they were very happy throughout their life so even death did not cause sorrow to them that is why it is called heaven and now we are in hell and the good news is it's going to be heaven within the next 20 years and that is why god comes in an old man's body and he names him brahma and he gives this divine knowledge through brahma's mouth and every one of us listening to that knowledge are called brahma kumars and brahma kumaris that is we are the direct children of god and we are spreading god's message to the world through these videos and several other medias so 
This is exactly why it is mentioned in all religions not to cry when somebody dies. Because there is nothing to cry. And in heaven, if they didn't cry, it's logical, it's sensible because nobody is dependent on each other. But now it's not the case, right? We are dependent on our family members, at least till we reach a certain age. So, how can I not cry when someone I love departs from my life? God says, everyone you see are going to die. So, death is something that will happen for sure the only one who doesn't die who doesn't leave you is me the god why can't you establish all relationship just with me <clears throat> there's no doubt that i can never give you pain I will never betray you like humans. All I give you is nothing but happiness. So establish all relationship only with me. Make me your husband. Make me your father. Make me your brother. Make me your best friend. I can be all. Now the question arises, how to make God my friend, husband, father? How is that possible without knowing anything about him? God says, that's a good question. It's really good. At least now you think of that because you've been going to churches, mosques, temples without asking this question. Without even being aware that you know nothing about God. It's nice that you realize that at least now God says, I myself have come, so I will give my true introduction. Only I can give my true introduction to my children. Yes, I'm your father. You are not this perishable body. You are the eternal soul that shines like a star in between your eyebrows. I'm the father of all souls, which is why I'm called the Supreme Father, Param Pita, which means I'm the father of all. I'm the father of souls, so I'm also a soul, which is why I'm called the Supreme Soul, Param Atma. You are in this body, you know where you resided before entering this body. This is the place where you resided. This is the place where you resided before entering this birth and death cycle of 5,000 years. And God also exists here all the time. God is also a soul, right? So he also shines like a tiny star, just like us. No bigger, no smaller. Similar to us, exactly like us. The only difference between God and other souls is we take birth. So we enter this birth and death cycle. God doesn't take birth in your mother's womb. So he stays out of this birth and death cycle, which is why it is written in Gita that I stay away from happiness and sadness. Do you know what it means? The heaven is filled with happiness and the hell is filled with sorrow. Since God doesn't enter heaven or hell, he stays out of happiness and sorrow. That's the exact meaning. That's the true meaning. 
so god only has this knowledge no humans has this knowledge if they have it would have revealed in religious texts but nobody has revealed it yet it's impossible for humans to give this knowledge which is why god himself comes towards the end of this cycle he comes 100 years before the completion of kaliyug and gives this knowledge you know why because it is through this knowledge the kaliyug is transforming into satyug the first yug or the hell is turned into heaven through this knowledge because by listening to this knowledge and put that knowledge into practice we become deities or angels from humans from ordinary humans we become angels filled with divine characters we become the embodiment of love peace and prosperity and God through his knowledge transform us into angels that is what happens now and God gives this knowledge so we are listening to his speeches daily through Brahma Kumari centers it is called Murli it is offered totally free absolutely free of cost because the one who teaches through Brahma Kumaris is God himself. He doesn't charge his own children. And this knowledge is not available anywhere else. Even if you are ready to spend crows, it is impossible to get this knowledge elsewhere. And it is only at this time Throughout the Kalpa, throughout the 5000 year time cycle, it is only now God comes and teaches you directly, which transforms you into angels, which transforms a man filled with sorrow into angels filled with happiness. It is by listening to his knowledge constantly that we become so elevated we live as elevated beings by remembering the knowledge constantly by remembering god constantly the remembering god is raja yoga before remembering god we have to constantly remind ourselves that we are not this perishable body but we are this imperishable soul that shines like a star in between the eyebrows and connect our mind with the Supreme Father who is also shi shining like a star but this place is called the Supreme Abode or Parandam or Paralog so this place is a golden orange light world all we see is golden orange colored light that's it there was no day no night it it is always golden orange colored so we have to remember God as a star that shines in a golden red colored sky because it was more like that but we have to remember him with love with the feeling that he is our father, our eternal father, the one who loves us truly, one who shows the real path to happiness. No man can give you the way to happiness. No matter if it is your physical father, physical mother, physical teacher, everything they say leads you finally into sadness which is why this world itself is now hell 
So now it's time to turn dumb ear to teachings of all humans and open your ear only to the teachings of God that's given through Brahma Kumaris. If you miss this now, you will miss it forever because whatever happens in one kalpa is going to repeat accurately kalpa after kalpa. So don't miss it by listening to his knowledge daily, by establishing all relationship only with God, you will live happily and die happily and you will remain happy even if somebody you love dies. Because you know, the soul doesn't die. It has just gone somewhere else to play a new part to settle its comic account and this is how you can be happy even when someone you love die so you will live happily you will die happily and the only way for that is Raj Yoga. Please, please rush to your rush to the Brahma Kumari Center in your town as soon as possible. It's very easy to find the center through internet. You know that, right? So browse over the internet for the nearest Brahma Kumari Center and go there and get the knowledge that's going to give you the life filled with happiness peace and prosperity for the next 2500 years whatever you think that will happen not only after entering heaven even now it is possible when you establish all your relationships with just one god om shanti thanks for watching